We've all heard the importance of making goals, so why aren't you better at setting and achieving them? In this video, we're going to dive deeper into the power of goal setting, and we're going to share some tips to help you be more successful. Matter of fact, stay until the end because this one tip is the key, but it's so simple that most people overlook it. I'm Liz J. Simpson, founder of The Big Money Movement, and I have the joy of being accompanied by Cheryl Burks and Heather Petherick, our esteemed coaches at The Big Money Movement. Cheryl, I'm going to kick it to you. When we talk about goal setting, what's one of the first things that someone should keep in mind? I think one of the very first things has to be how you personally and professionally define success. Cool. Yeah. Mm. If you don't know how you define success, it's really hard to set goals to achieve <laughs> success. <laughs> right. So that goes without saying, but at the end of the day, really understanding like, what are the things that you want to have in your life, right? So we're mm. in an era where you can and should build your business around your life yeah. and not your life around your business. That could be a success story for one person, but not for the other. Maybe the other person doesn't feel like they're in that space just yet. So you have to be really clear and really um, focused on what you feel success is. Right. I love it. There's a uh, thought, just as it's just quick saying, is that um, success is not one size fits all. It yeah. has to be tailored to what you desire for your life. So that came to mind. But go ahead, Heather. Yeah, it was really feeding off of that <laughs> point. It's like everybody gets everybody gets to choose their own definition. And the risk we run is we're looking out into the world about who is successful, what do they have, so what do I need to achieve? And assuming that their definition or formula for success is gonna feel rewarding to us, how many careers and how many years has been spent chasing a definition of success that really ultimately doesn't make us satisfied. So it takes discipline to choose our own and define our own success. I feel like that scenario is something that I've been hearing about more and more lately. You know, we serve women in the big money movement. If you don't know about it, you need to get to know about it. And we help women entrepreneurs land five and six figure corporate clients. And what's really interesting is I keep hearing a narrative of, I don't really know what I want. Like I've been on this roller coaster, this hamster wheel, I've had these decades in corporate America, I'm getting off of that and I'm in this space if I get to define life on my terms and I don't even know what that definition should yeah. look like, right? And um, shout out to Lisa Hufford, founder of Simplicity Consulting. You know, we've um, brought her in for events and Lisa Hufford does a lot of work and she's written a book about um, personal branding. I think it's Work Your Way. Work Your Way. Work Your Way. Yeah. It's a book we, we bought for all of the members in the big money movement. And Lisa underscores that as well. She's like, there's so many women who, you know, we're so used to having been told what to do that now that we've been given the choice, it takes some time to say like, what the heck do I really want? Yeah. Very cool. Um, beyond defining for yourself truly what is your definition of success, I think the next challenge is not letting your mindset sabotage the path to that success, right? Yeah. While we can do a good job of defining our own custom fit version of success, so often we've come from a background of struggle or frustration yeah. or disappointment. And we think, okay, well, now I'm sticking my neck out and I've defined my authentic version of success. Sometimes those old expectations of failure, frustration and struggle stay with us, even though we're operating in this new space of freedom and autonomy. And so it's important that along the path to success, we're constantly evaluating and really being self-aware, taking a personal inventory of what's still operating my behavior. Is it still this modus operandi of it has to be hard, there needs to be struggle in order for the success to be truly satisfying? And let's just be honest, it doesn't have to be that way. <laughs> yeah. Success doesn't have to be a struggle, particularly when we get, you get good at prioritizing, focusing, and economizing our effort, not trying to do all the things at once, but really focusing on what are the most leveraged activities and behaviors that are gonna drive us to that definition of success. Right, and connecting it to your thoughts, right? Mm. And knowing if those thoughts are working for you or working Is against you. Is it serving you. me or right. hurting me? Exactly, I grew up in a household where my father, coming from corporate, became an entrepreneur, so I got it very honestly, but <laughs> it was the ditch digging. 
it was work has to be hard. I remember him yeah. carrying his briefcase to Thanksgiving and Christmas in case business broke out. <gasps> he said yes. case business broke out, like in case he I need to pull out my portfolio. Prepared. Exactly. And so when I first entered, I had to realize that you're carrying with you your your view of what you think that looks like, and you can create your own new and refreshed approach to right. everything. And I think there's also an element as women that we feel guilty for having success, and so we feel like we're obligated to show a struggle, or we need to earn success through struggle. Um, and I don't think, I think we can let that go. Or validate ourselves. Yes. I think you just like, <laughs> took my breath away. She said <laughs> obligated to show a struggle. Right, the whole that hustle is a hard word. movement. Oh, that's Come a on. word. Let's right. not glamorize hustle. Yes. <laughs> exactly. Oh my gosh. You know, one of the things, one of the ways that I've seen this show up consistently with many of the women we coach is they'll bring to us a strategy and they'll ask our tactical thoughts on that particular strategy. But we always pull them out high level. And we're like, okay, before I give you a course of action to achieve this thing, pull me back and help me understand how this thing is connected to the thing you yeah. really want. And oftentimes the answer is some version of, well, going for what I really want wasn't working the way I want it to, so I've now chosen this detour so I can get traction here. And it's like, we, we negotiate ourselves out of our true north, and it's like, you don't have to go on these detours, right? It's, it's kind of like, for lack of a better phrase, throwing the baby out with the bathwater. Yeah. Yes. Like, just because you encounter an obstacle or a hurdle, don't make that be the thing to negotiate yourself out of your goals. Mm -hmm. How can I be resourceful? Or maybe the way I was approaching this thing is something that I can tweak. Right. What I love so much is the success stories of some of the women in our program of the Big Money Movement who they may have been coming from a background where they think it needs to take months and years of struggle to reach a level of success. But with the right strategies and the right support, it can be just a matter of months and they're now landing five and six figure contracts. Struggle and success do not need to be one and the same. Yeah. I love that. I agree. And the stories that we tell ourselves. So I think that goes back to what you were saying, Cheryl, it's so much mindset and having people around you to support with that. You know, I, um, I'm again, as always, I'm going to mess up a phrase, but it talks about like journeying alone, like in your own head is a scary place to be like yes. stuck in your own head and you need <laughs> other people, you know, to help hold you accountable. Speaking of goal setting, I believe like, write the vision, make it plain, right? There's a statistic that says like you have a 42% higher chance of achieving something simply by writing it down. Yes. And one of the things I've always done with goal setting is one, once I've done the self-awareness and I've kind of done my mindset work, which is an ever evolving daily, <laughs> daily process. But once I've kind of really come to define success, I write it down and I make sure like, I breathe on it and just, um, what is the word, like actualize it in my own head, wow. right? Our brain doesn't know the difference between imagination and reality, right. so I visualize it, but then I also send it to others. And so what's been really cool about some of the major goals I've achieved in my life is, it's like, even if I wanted to celebrate it alone, I couldn't, because I'll have family members who are like, remember in 2020, you emailed me this goal. Yeah, I see right. you doing it now. Or, or what are you doing? Because you emailed me some goals, and that don't look like what yeah, you wrote you down, that. right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so just having that, and, and I don't think accountability has to be a bad thing, but life is challenging. Adulting is a whole yes. thing, right? And life is busy, and sometimes we can be so busy that we lose track of the the path we charted for ourselves. Yeah. And so writing it down and having others to support you, I think is yeah. critical. Enlisting colleagues, friends, connections in that vision and that goal can actually make the path quicker and more elegant because you never know where that conversation is gonna spark the next idea, the next strategy that's gonna accelerate and catapult your path on that success. Yeah. And you definitely want to add some time frames to it, right? So we want to be mm. clear that we don't want this open-ended idea of what success looks like. Give yourself to the end of the year, until next summer, until the end of the month, and start to really hone in on how quickly do you want the first goal to happen so you can get to the second and third goals. Which brings us to the one simple secret tip that most people overlook, but I think is the game changer, which is really documenting the process and tracking the process. <laughs> you know, I am always talking about journaling to people, and I think people think about journaling the way that many think about meditating, like, 
what is me sitting still and focusing yeah. on my breathing really going to do for my life? And I'm like, until you do it, you're really you not going to know. get it. Yeah. That's how I feel about journaling. It's like, I know it seems so simple, but it is so powerful to write down your experiences, whether that's daily, weekly, monthly, when you get to it, like you don't have to give yourself a narrative to shame yourself about how frequently you do it. Mm -hmm. But documenting the journey lets you really see on paper, wow, this is how I'm feeling right now. You know what, I thought today was really hard, but I look back a couple weeks ago, I thought that was hard. Okay, I have to say this. Because I document and journal, I have journal entries where the day of, I'm like, all hope is lost, things aren't working, and literally 48 hours later, a major win will happen. Mm -hmm. And it's so powerful for me to see, in one moment, you thought all was lost, and you had no clue a few moments later, everything was going to change. Chills. Hope. Right? Like, mm -hmm. And so when you document in this process, it's like, I know that any given moment and experience isn't finite. Yeah. And if I can just keep pushing forward, I'll see my growth. And I think that's such a motivator if we're willing to do it. Yeah. And how powerful is it to look back at that, the narrative of that journey and to see how far you've come? Because yeah. it's so easy to dismiss. Oh, it was always easier. Oh, you know. Lies. But to actually <laughs> see the, the, the heart, the black and white truth of the journey, it, it, like it, it catapults a woman's confidence and pride and sense of what's possible next. 100%. I love it. I'm so inspired to go journal right now and just <laughs> and set some new goals now that we've been speaking about this. But we want to continue this conversation with you. Click to the next video where we are going to address this myth. Is it a good idea or is it a bad idea to work with your spouse? Speaking of support system, click that video. Cheryl, Heather, and I will see you there. Bye.